This sport came to be in 1976 in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's a Canadian invention. The reason that we developed it was there was no team sport for individuals with quadriplegia, with uh, disabilities that affected their hands and their arms a little bit. We could still wheel and, and you know play with the basketball players, but a lot of us couldn't shoot. And so when it came to game time, we'd sit on the bench. That's the reason that it was created, so that we'd have a game. Well, the game is uh, it's designed a little bit like uh, rugby in, in, in that you score by carrying the ball across the goal line. You gotta get two wheels across the goal line, you gotta have possession of the ball when you do that. There's four quarters, four eight minute quarters, stop time. Five minutes in between, every team gets four timeouts. Players can only hold the ball for, well, they can hold it for longer, but they have to bounce it or pass it every 10 seconds, okay? Then they have 40 seconds to score, like a shot clock. It keeps the speed of the game up. But the, the big part of this game is that it's four players per team, and everybody is classified. So they're given a, a, a number based on their ability, their functional ability. And those numbers range from 0.5 to 3.5. Four players on the court, you can only add up to eight. So what that does is it ensures a role for all different levels of disability, and it creates the strategy of the game. My whole life I grew up playing lacrosse and other contact sports. So as soon as I had my amputations when I was 10 years old, I wanted to get back into sport and eventually found with the rugby. Uh, my first big, uh, big competition, I guess, was the London Paralympics in 2012. And then just last summer, we had the World Championships in Denmark where we came home with silver medal. And then this summer, we're participating in the Toronto Pan Am Games for the first time. I think the biggest thing that the sport provides for me is like a community of people that have been through similar situations and sort of an outlet to be competitive in a way that I wasn't sure would be possible after I had my accident. I was super athletic beforehand, so I was pretty excited to find something that to get that adrenaline rush with afterwards as well. For me, it's just like it's a team sport, which is great. And like I grew up playing hockey with guys, so it, I just felt like at home and like really comfortable right off the bat, which is really nice. And I just like having something to work on, work towards, and being able to be competitive is really good for me. So yeah, I, really, I like it a lot. Back in the day, we played in our everyday chairs. So the chair I sit in now, we'd show up at the gym and we'd just start playing and crashing into each other, knocking us out. Now the chairs have evolved drastically, battering rams, defensive, offensive chairs, and, um, and tip bars, and it, but it's just great. It makes the game a lot faster. You know, the benefits of recreation are pretty well known. So, you know, the one thing that's nice about this is it doesn't matter what you want, whether you want to be a high performance athlete or just play for exercise, you know, especially in BC, all, all, um, all, there's, there's all sorts of opportunities for people to play at any level that they want to. Across the country, it's really gaining ground. More and more clubs are springing up everywhere. There's new clubs in Ontario. Uh, we have uh, new clubs in BC, like the Kelowna KOs. We're starting one in Prince George pretty soon, and it has a bit of a legacy piece after the Canada Games. So that type of stuff is really exciting and a way to develop the, the sport within BC and, and across the country. I look around and it's, uh, there's 30 teams in the world now. They're all over the world. There's teams developing in Thailand. You know, and that kind of stuff is fantastic.